In Time Movie Review. The movie puts us in a world where the only currency is time. When a person ages to the age of 25, they stop actually aging. They don't change their appearance, but they also only have one more year to live. Now, they can prolong their life by doing labor. There is, of course, a class system where some people have a lot of time and other people are living day to day. The metaphor is about as obvious as it can get. But of course the movie is quite relevant with, you know, it's really impossible to talk about this movie without also mentioning the Occupy protests. And the movie really does convey the key ideas, you know, that of the protests. Whether or not it conveys them... Well, some of the time it conveys them quite well. But I'll get into that. The film starts with our lead character being given a lot of extra time by someone who has an entire century that he's just, you know, he appears to be just giving it away. He gives a century to our lead, Will, I think. I'm no good with names. And he lets his time run out. Will decides to try to stir up the system. Also because the man who gives him a century, Hamilton, he makes a he makes a statement that makes Will wonder about the, the nature of this system. If maybe the people who have a lot of time actually need it, or, you know, and again, metaphor is about as obvious as it gets. He goes to the rich neighborhood and starts trying to get additional time, and he starts doing the whole Robin Hood thing. He meets a rich young girl, or, well, yeah, actually she is young, and he tries to convince her to, you know, join his cause. And so Robin Hood meets Little John, and yeah. The film is advertised as somewhat of an action sci-fi thriller. The action is pretty good. Both brief scenes of it. What little action there is, it's in these very, very short stints of, you know, and even these stints do not occur very often. It is not an action movie. It, I would say it's a thriller though, and that's a good thing because that's what Andrew Nichol does well. At least that's it's something he does better. I don't see the man doing a complete action movie, and some of the action in this also really it's like watching Christopher Nolan do action. They're just they're not entirely comfortable with it. They're you know better at thrillers. And no, I'm not really comparing Christopher Nolan to Edward Nickel. Now the the sci-fi aspects. The movie really doesn't come off as that much of a sci-fi movie much of the time, other than this whole time thing, and even that, it feels more like an alternate kind of, yeah, an alternate world to our own, 
you know, it doesn't feel very futuristic. I get that it's, you know, yes, a lot of the movie takes place in the ghetto, but even when we do see the rich people's places, you know, it's like when you see, when you watch Gattaca, you know, again, Nickel, when doing sci-fi, I don't know, maybe he doesn't want to take away from, you know, the the issues that he's trying to convey. Anyway, it, you know, there are some cars and some guns that are kind of modified, you know, to look different. But, you know, it's still bullets and it's still, you know, gas-driven cars. They actually do... Excuse me, they actually do make a few attempts at making the cars seem more futuristic. I think some of the car doors opened the other way, you know. I don't know, I guess he watched Back to the Future and thought that was a really good way to make something look futuristic, you know. Also, some of the car doors make this science fiction-y sound when they open, you know, like the cargo door of a big spaceship or something like there's yeah it doesn't work yeah the movie just doesn't come off that much as a sci-fi film but I'm not sure it's really supposed to just don't go in expecting a very futuristic film the acting is pretty good I do believe this is the first time I've actually seen Justin Timberlake in a movie and I gotta say he's pretty good it might also be the first time I've seen Amanda Seyfried I think is her name who plays the rich girl and probably is our lead of course Amanda Seyfried I think it might be the first time I've seen her in a movie and checking her filmography I would say the reason this is the first movie I watch with her is the fact that yeah, I'm a guy. Now, the film can be quite intense at points, very exciting. Again, Nickel does do this pretty well, I would say. There are some... The overall story structure is pretty decent, you know, stuff is set up, followed up on. There are some character arcs and story arcs. The... The characters aren't bad, there's, you know, some of them are only just in it, in it just enough that they actually sort of have a character arc and that feels a little bit forced, but I do like that one of our main sort of protagonists, Killian Murphy, plays a cop, this universe's version of a cop, and He's really not a bad guy as such. He's shown to have a lot of integrity, and he clearly takes his job very seriously. And, you know, it's it's really just that. He doesn't come off as drunk on power, or, you know, out to get the people who don't have a, you know, a lot of time. That is something that I have to get into with this movie. Some people are going to find just the the writing utterly intolerable and this is where we get back to Andrew Nichol and his communication of the issues that he finds important and typically are important I, you know, I, I've watched every movie he's directed by now and most of the ones he's written, the only one I haven't watched that he's been at all involved in is The Terminal which I might watch at some point, anyway they're all interesting. They're not all good, especially Simone. But they're all interesting. They all have something to say, and sometimes they're pretty interesting the way they say it. But his biggest problem when trying to communicate these things is he overwrites the crap out of it. It's just really hammered home you know, when he feels he has something to say. He, I think he needs fewer yes-men, or maybe more of a team to bounce ideas off of, or something, I don't know exactly what. It's just, you know, 
again, the symbolism is obvious, but there are so many things in this where it's like, you know, let's just come out and say it. The rich are just entirely the bad guy people, and, you know, the poor are just honorable and, you know, there's there's almost nothing negative to the poor people and almost nothing positive to the rich people. Yeah. And then there are the puns. Oh my, the puns. One thing is the fact that time is currency in this universe. That's, that's fine. Basically, half the time when they use the word time, it actually means money. And you pick up on this, you know, just about immediately. It's, there's really no, you know, you're, you're never wondering, hey, what, what is, what does that mean? It's always, oh, right, because time is money in this. But, they take these phrases and words that have meaning already, and they change the meaning because they want to be clever. I'm going to spare you more than a few... Yeah, I'm, I'm only going to give you a few examples of this, because... I like my audience. I don't want you to feel pain. Minutemen are gangsters who rob time. To clean someone's clock means to extract all of their time so that they die. And, you know, the, you've probably seen in, in the trailers and, you know, posters and whatnot, you know, left arm all the way down, numbers. Big neon green numbers that show how much time you have left. That's referred to as clocks in this movie. Hence, clean one's clock. Do you have a minute? Doesn't mean... Yeah, it means... Can I borrow one minute of your time? Or, you know, it's like spare some change, mister, basically. Yeah. And the movie is full of those. The dialogue is pretty good. There are a lot of pretty quotable and, you know, well-expressed lines. And again, they really, you know, some of these are just... They're essentially, they, they would work as slogans for the Occupy movement. It's pretty well filmed. Some of it feels a little copied from other stuff, you know. There is a chase across a dark rooftop where people are wearing long black coats and shooting at each other with pistols because you know the matrix made a lot of money 12 years ago and yeah that also kind of you know in general just the the police especially killing you know big long black coat yeah you know no no badge or they just the the, the coat Yeah, that pretty well covers it. All in all, I do recommend this movie. I just, you know, just go and expecting a nickel movie. You know, it's... And if you haven't seen one before, it's not futuristic. It's not necessarily going to be subtle. It's not an action movie, but it is tense you get to care about the characters pretty well and they're actually, you know, they're interesting enough. You know, our lead isn't just a complete hero with absolutely nothing. You know, he, he has some street smarts and not everything he does is entirely admirable. Yeah. All in all, it's good. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.